everybody now let's continue the discussion of descending track 2 in the previous lecture we have discussed regarding physiology of descending track 1 in that we have seen the classification of different tracks and we have learned in detail regarding corticospinal tract now let's move further again see like I'm explaining whenever there is an action from nervous system it is either in response to a sensory stimulation or an idea from the mind this will go to cortical association area premotor cortex and motor cortex here planning and programming of action takes place but before execution from the spinal cord it takes opinion from its two its good siblings basal ganglion these two are called as motor coordination center they constantly give feedbacks to motor cortex now from here the information descends down to spinal cord for execution so these are called as descending tracts this is a direct and this is indirect while taking a station in between that is a brain stem on the spinal cord ultimately they are ending on either of the three neurons which are located this is alpha motor neuron which is a principal neuron which supplies the skeletal muscle this is the gamma motor neuron which supplies the muscle spindle and these are the interneurons so in the last lecture we have discussed the direct tracts that is a corticospinal and corticobulbar tracts now let's continue with this second that is indirect tract the tracts which are taking a station in the brain stem so in the brain stem we are having a bunch of nucleus so based on this nuclei and their termination the names are being given so let's start with the first so this was the classification which you have seen direct pathways and indirect pathway direct is corticospinal and corticobulbar tract indirect we are going to discuss today one more classification pyramidal tracts so this corticospinal tract while moving from the medulla they form pyramids so they are called as a pyramidal tract remaining all are called as extra pyramidal tracts one more classification based on location in the spinal cord those located laterally and they are supplying the distal group of muscle they are called as the lateral pathways and those located medially which are supplying the axial muscle axial skeletal muscles of the body which maintains the body posture and the proximal muscles to start with now so in the brain stem there is location of these two red nuclei that's why they are called as a rubro so they are red in color now these are the nuclei which are having basically same sensory homunculus as a sorry they are having same motor homunculus as the motor homunculus of a cerebral cortex but in the cerebral cortex they are very fine representation is there in the cerebral cortex being a big but in the red nucleus there is a crude presentation of whole body in the red nucleus so it is just a uh, copy of cerebral cortex but in a crude format so now the fibers are arising from here immediately crossing to opposite side and they are coming down the spinal cord so this as arising from the red nucleus terminating in the spinal cord it is called as a rubrospinal tract so this is again but having under control from cerebral cortex so fibers are starting from the cerebral cortex they are taking a break in the red nucleus they are supplying them controlling them and from there it is coming down to the spinal cord so these are called as corticorubral fibers simple names arising from the cortex ending in the red nucleus so these are the corticorubral fibers they are also having influence from the cerebellum on from either side so their main function is basically control of voluntary motor activity that is their main function but under normal condition this action is not displayed or it is overshadowed by the presence of cortex where we are having a motor homunculus and here we are having a clear presentation of whole part of the body so when cortex is working actions of red uh, rubrospinal tract are not visible at all so this is from your textbook of uh, physiology Ganong diagram is given so it is now you can see it is 
crossing the double side and it is going laterally so it is just like corticospinal tract only location like that only and function similar to that only controls voluntary motor activity so but actions are displayed when there is a you can see I have shown here a lesion in the cerebral cortex for example because of any hematoma or hemorrhage or embolism in cerebral cortex functions of cerebral cortex goes off immediately we will get a uh, hemiplegia on opposite side as the fibers are crossing the opposite side but after some days patients start to recover and he will start getting the voluntary activity now this action what the patient is doing is basically coming from the <coughs> red nucleus fineness will not be there but he will be able to do voluntary motor activity so so this is the <coughs> control of uh, uh, this function of the red nucleus controls voluntary motor activity but usually no, under normal condition functions are overshadowed by the presence of cerebral cortex so this theme I have shown in this diagram this red nucleus crossing to opposite side corticorubral fibers so control of voluntary activity but they are visible only when there is a cerebral cortex stops functioning because of any other reason now let's move to the other tracts now there are some bunch of nuclei present in the again in the our brain stem so these are called as tectum okay now they are having connections with two important sensations of the brain one with the visual pathway this connection other with the auditory pathway so they are having connection with visual cortex and auditory cortex means two senses are in connection with this tectum so they receives impulse from this so they are having anatomical connection with them obviously based on this anatomical connection their function will be based on this connections only now again these tracts are starting from here crossing to opposite side and again ending in the spinal cord so obviously now the name will be again as it is arising from tectum ending in the spinal cord so name is given tectospinal tract so tectospinal tract and as they are ending on this spinal cord uh, neurons so it is obviously having motor activity and as the connections is with the visual cortex and auditory cortex so the functions will be in relation to that reflexive head turning in response to visual and auditory stimuli so you must uh, so whenever move, we are moving in on the way we change our head movement with respect to either somebody is calling us or we see see something so in response to visual and auditory stimulations there is a movement of the body and the head so it is the function of tectospinal tract so it is controlling the motor activity in respect to that one now apart from this so cortex midbrain pons and medulla so now there are bunch of nuclei located in the pons and medulla they are scattered like a meshwork of reticulum so they are called as reticular formation so here there is a reticular formation the nuclei are scattered in a like a meshwork of net net that is reticular formation from here obviously fibers are starting and they are ending in the spinal cord so those are, st are starting from the medulla they are called as medullary reticulospinal tract and some are starting from the pons they are called as pontine reticulospinal tract simple names are there now they are also having influence from these three centers now cortex cerebellum and basal ganglion so these are the very important neuron which regulates muscle tone in the beginning diagram skin diagram i have shown that the cortex takes opinion from its two of the sibling that is a basal ganglion and cerebellum so they are playing very important role in the motor coordination so this tracts are playing important role in regulation of muscle tone under control from cerebellum basal ganglion and cortex so these connections are there so cortex is having connection this is the connection from basal ganglion this connection is coming from the cerebellum so 
So their function is basically regulation of tone and posture. So these are the important functions of cerebellum and basal ganglion. So they are influencing muscle tone through this reticulospinal tract. In that again, medullary reticulospinal tract is inhibitory in nature and pontine reticulospinal tract is excitatory in nature. And as we know reticular formation, if you recall the physiology of ascending tract, we have seen that spinothalamic tract is giving information to reticular spinal tract while going up. We just recall. So it is getting excitation from lower that is spinal cord. So pontine is receiving constant excitation from the lower one. Medullary is receiving inhibition from is getting impulses from the upper one. So medullary is inhibitory in nature, pontine is excitatory in nature. Pontine's excitation is coming from the lower and medullaries are being controlled from the upper one. So this again we will discuss in detail during physiology of our regulation of muscle tone and posture. But right now for you these two tracts are there arising from the reticular formation terminating in the spinal cord and their main function is regulation of tone and posture. So these are the reticular spinal tract. Now one more tract is there. So these nuclei which are yellow in color located these are called as vestibular nuclei. So as the name indicates they are having connection with the vestibular apparatus. So tract starting from vestibular nucleus ending in the spinal cord obvious name will be given that is a vestibulospinal tract. So this tract is having connection with the vestibular apparatus which if you recall from your knowledge of 12th it is the center for the balance and equilibrium. So this vestibular apparatus influences the vestibular, vestibular nuclei. Again the cerebellum it has got three functional parts corticocerebellum, spinocerebellum and vestibulocerebellum. Now this vestibular cerebellum has got strong influence on this vestibular nuclei. So cerebral control also comes on this. So ultimately their function is to maintain balance and equilibrium. So this is the vestibulospinal tract. So they are maintaining the mus muscle contraction in response to balance and equilibrium. So this descending tracts, corticospinal, corticorubral, corticobulbar, rubrospinal, tectospinal, vestibulospinal and reticulospinal. Out of this, these are called as extra pyramidal tract as they are going, going out of the pyramid and corticospinal as it is a forming a pyramid, it is called as a pyramidal tract. So here we are completing the classification, direct pathways that is corticospinal and corticobulbar. Indirect pathways we have discussed the four that is a rubrospinal, tectospinal, <coughs> reticulospinal and vestibulospinal. Pyramidal and extrapyramidal. So remaining all are coming under category of extrapyramidal tract. And lateral pathway means those located laterally. These are the two. That is a lateral corticospinal and rubrospinal. <coughs> Both are controlling the distal muscles of the body. Voluntary activity. And medial pathways are anterior corticospinal, tectospinal, vestibulospinal and reticulospinal. They are supplying the <clears throat> axial skeleton and maintaining the posture muscles of the body. So they maintain the posture of the body and <clears throat> lateral pathways are maintaining the body movements because they are supplying the distal group of muscles. So here we are completing the discussion of <clears throat> descending tracts. Thank you.